This is a review for Olympus's 45mm f1.2. It's one of their Proline lenses, and I gotta say, I'm very impressed with the lens. I was actually really excited to try it out, and just seeing the images roll in and starting to process the data, I gotta say, I, I just get excited every single time I'm gonna get to take this lens out every single night. It's actually a clear night tonight, so I have one more shot with this thing, and then I gotta send it back to Olympus because it is on loan from them. But I'm definitely going to buy this lens, you know, after the experience that I've had with it. Four things about this lens really impressed me. So, number one, optically, it's a nice sharp lens. I can use it at f1.8 and get a usable image all the way out to the very edge of the frame. Now, if I was to open it up to f1.6, then I can use the images with about a 10% crop. And at f1.4, I think about a 20% crop, I was able to get good images out of it. And if you were going to use it completely wide open, you're going to have to crop it a little bit heavier, about a 30 to 40% crop, in order to get rid of the uh, spherical aberrations that are around the very edges. But optically, it's, it's a fantastic lens. 45mm f1.8 that I used from Olympus a couple of weeks ago, that lens, I had to stop it down a stop and a half. This lens here, I only had to stop it down about one stop to get a perfect image. So that to me is very impressive. It's obviously a much sharper lens than the, the lower end, the 1.8 was. Obviously the number two thing that I'm impressed about this lens with is just how fast it is. Uh, using it in the daytime and at night, it's just it's really nice to have f1.2 there for you. The number three thing that I'm really impressed with this lens is just the build quality. It's a very rugged lens. It looks like it will last a long time. Definitely not built for, you know, light use. Number four would be that this is a mechanically linked focusing mechanism. I really like that sliding forward focus ring. That to me is just a very desirable feature, and I'm glad it's included in this lens. With my backyard Bortle 6 Sky, I was actually only able to take about a 30 second exposure before the image was actually starting to get overexposed essentially. Now I was able to travel to a couple Bortle 4.9 locations and get some images there and at those locations uh, about a minute and a half, you know 90 seconds, I was shooting a lot of 120 seconds which is probably a little bit too long. Comparing it to the 45mm f1.8 this 45mm f1.2, because it's almost a stop and a half faster, relatively can capture that same object at about an hour. You know, it's it's really amazing how, how quick you can capture images with this lens. If you're going to a dark sky location, a lens like this, you can you can photograph a lot of parts of the sky in one single night. You can probably capture four to five images a night with this with this lens. Up in the upper right hand corner you can see Betelgeuse which is actually pretty dark when I took this photo and as you can see the lens is actually still rendering it as a nice yellow which speaks to the lens's ability to resolve color correctly. So I was very impressed with that and then down the bottom right you can see uh, the Rosette Nebula and there's a bunch of other little nebulas that are scattered through here. Some of these are pretty faint and yet they're showing up quite nicely. Now the coolest thing of all though is that there's a lot of dark nebulosity that's starting to show up in this picture. And this is only like a couple hours of data and I did this in a Portal 5 sky. Uh, other people tell you me often that you need Portal 3 sky with 7 to 20 hours of data in order to capture dark nebulosity. But here we are doing it in a Portal 5. Now this is a very popular target. It's Orion and you can see Barnard's loop here which it shows up very well in this picture and yes there's some dark nebulosity going on here and I was even able to resolve a lot of details and some very faint little objects that are in here. Uh, I was a little disappointed that the witch's head which you can see at the very top right hand of the corner disappeared a little bit and that was because when I started subtracting the light pollution it just ceased to exist. But you can still see a faint amount of it and I was, I was pretty happy to be able to capture that. All right, so here we are in Stellarium. And in Stellarium, there's some features here that allow you to preview what your field of view is going to show you. And this is a really good way to find targets. And I want to show you, there's just a huge number of targets that can be photographed using a lens like this, even though it's a fairly wide angle lens. Um, so up here, you can see I've got my settings to 45 millimeter. I'm using an EM1 sensor. And right here, this right here allows us to rotate it 
But this right here is Orion. This is the picture we were just looking at. But uh, if we zoom in here, it'll start to brighten up some of these objects a little bit more. But right there, right there's the Witched Nebula, which I kind of missed a little bit. But you know, there's just a ton of different things. Like this, this object right here, we could even center that up and take a picture of that. This right here is the first image that I showed you with the rosette in the bottom left, Beetlejuice here in the right. But you can see just a whole bunch of different things starting to pop up and all of these things will very quickly become visible. Now, some of these objects right here, I know this nebula right here in particular is a very faint one. You're going to need at least a Bortle 3 sky to capture this and probably at least a three to four minute exposure. That's a faint object, but if you can get an object like that, it's a huge object and it's just a really rewarding object to photograph. You got the California Nebula here. And in a lens like this, you know, you're not going to center up just one object. You're gonna to get to capture a couple different objects, but the cool thing is, is you'll, you'll really get to know the sky quickly. So here's some more objects. This is the Heart and Soul Nebula which was a target I, I want to I want to shoot next year and then we got a whole bunch of different things right here to photograph you know there's just you can spend an, an immense amount of time just imaging different items in the sky like this is the North American nebula which will show up fairly largely in this lens some more nebulosity down here and then we start getting near the core of the, of the galaxy that we're in and then some of these objects down here, like there's the Lagoon Nebula, and then there's a whole bunch of nebulas right here that will all show up pretty well in this lens. And then this, this is another target which I've actually started to work on. This is right the head of Scorpius. Here I can turn on the constellations so that you can see what I'm talking about. This particular object right here has a lot of different colors in it. It's got some reds in it, it's got some blues and some yellows. And it's, it looks pretty neat once it's done. I'll have to go to a darker sky, probably like a, a more solid board with 4.5 sky to capture an object like this. But certainly looking forward to working on it.